morning. We're off on another fishing adventure. We're on uh, beautiful Spednik Lake. We're on the bottom end, which we've never fished before. So this is a real uh, ex exploratory trip for us, and we're going to be real careful because it's very rocky. Uh, today you'll notice that we're wearing masks. My, my fishing partner, Ron, and I, we've got some masks on. At this point, we obviously can't be six feet apart, so we're just being careful. Once we get fishing, we've got a 21-foot boat. We've got it marked off in three-foot increments, so we know what the distances are. So once we're fishing, we're good, but this close together, we're going to wear a mask. Even your weighted Senko right off the motor, drop it right off the back of the motor. That's where the, what you're seeing is right under the motor. See what we can do. I'm throwing a white and green Senko with a little bit of weight on it to get it down quick. Well, as I mentioned earlier, we're on Spednik Lake and we're right, this is Canada, this is the United States. So we're, you know, we're being careful which side of the lake we're fishing on. I did a little uh, research on the mapping on this last night because it's, it's such a big body of water. And from where we used to fish at the top end is 17 miles up the lake. And the lake itself is 17,250 acres. So it's a lot of water. It's, it's bigger than most lakes that we fish tournaments on, substantially bigger. Uh, very rocky. We're being really careful. We've got the Triton with us today, and we're being really careful we don't bang it up on anything. And uh, we're going to see if we can catch some fish today. He pushed that forward. I it never even felt the take. He just pulled that under and pushed it forward at the same time. I went to pop it and it was gone. Yes. That's a nice fish. He's not bad at all. No. no, that's one of the bigger ones I've seen. First one of the day. Yeah. Little little jack all top water. Eating that, you okay? Boy, he doesn't want to come in yet. <laughs> There he is. Oh yeah, yeah. That's a solid that's fish right there. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, that's yeah, good that's fish. Solid fish right there. Look at the belly. These fish. So these fish probably spawned about a month ago. This is we're in July right now, but I mean he's definitely feeding up. That's a chubby fish right there. So that guy come up on just over six foot of water, and and he just took that top water. He just pulled that right under, which is always the big fish. Just it just goes under and disappears. Some of the smaller guys, you'll see the big splash and they jump on it. And that fish was too something just because of the belly. Sometimes it's good for a fish or two. He jumped right up over top of it and got it on the way down. Oh, I'm telling you what, they are spunky. Another good size one though. Another de yeah, he's decent, yeah. For me, these, these are not tournament grade fish, but my goodness, they're great fun fish. Especially top, top water is so much fun because sometimes they just literally explode out of the water. Sometimes they just pull it under. Now this guy's a couple of years younger than the other one, but he's feeding up well too. Big belly, very brown fish. Yeah. There we go. It's funny because we were coming up the bank and it's really shallow over there and it comes out shallow and then about the four foot mark, there's a bunch of big boulders and it drops to eight feet. And I just commented to Ron that all of a sudden it came up to six feet from eight feet out further. And that's where these fish have been sitting out in that, where that water depth changed. So again, right on that transition where that rolled over into eight feet. Come on, darling. There we go. You got one too? Yep. Double header. First double of the day. Twins, the little twin. There you go, bud. What do you got there, Ron? Oh, we got, we do. They, we got twins. Ron's about the same. What was that one on, Ron? That's oh, on. a little swim bait. Yeah, a little swim bait. A little Rhapsody 09 or whatever they call it. It's just a little kind of a bluish green with a white belly and an orange tail. I haven't used one before, so. We tied it on yesterday just to try it. A tube fish. So what happened there, we're in seven foot of water and my screen come up to three feet. And they, we have no light and I couldn't see it. There's a big boulder down there and I just dragged that over the boulder. That was home to that little guy. And I just pitch it back there and see if the little guy had a big brother or 
mother or somebody there with them. That's one of the reasons I, I'm always watching the sonar for something different on the bottom. I say there's obviously that's a big boulder because it took us a minute to drift over it. And that guy picked it up right as we come over the back side. We could hope for bigger. Yeah. He's a little fighter. I don't think he's very big, but he's got a lot he's of spawn. Full of it, yeah. So he's going right around the boat back here. Good bad color on, on me. Him, oh, that's not bad. That's not bad. Oh, geez, no, geez. Oh, it's a largemouth. There you go. Now that, I got to get your picture. That's a largemouth. That's probably the one that missed me because it was a big boil. They're all over the place. You know, depending on who you talk to, how they got here, but they're, they're everywhere. Get her up in front of yourself. Mr. Largemouth bass. Well, it was a nice looking fish and good fish. Uh, I've never caught one before, it's my first time. Well, it's kind of interesting for Ron. That's the first time he's ever caught a largemouth. And I know on, on the upper end of the lake, 17 miles away, um, we've been fishing up there off and on for four or five years, and we've never seen a largemouth in here before either. So it's, they're, they're spreading around, uh, you know, however they are being spread. But. They're, they're starting to inhabit a lot of the lakes. It'll be, um, there's no getting rid of them once they're here. They're, once they're in, they're in and they're breeding. So there'll be a competition for prime waters between them and the uh, smallmouth. And one of the articles I read before said that the, the largemouth will outcompete the smallmouth for prime habitat, but they should be able to coexist you know, you know, in the long run, they'll coexist. Well, that one actually spun out better, pulled line, pulled off the drag. So, I mean, I don't think they, maybe they don't come up and splash around as much. I don't know, Rick would tell you more than, that, than I can on that. But I know they pulled down and he ran with the line. So he put up a pretty decent little fight, I would think. We're gonna catch more. This has actually been a good topwater morning for me. I don't throw them a lot, but uh. they're, they're not monsters, but they're feisty. Whoa, that's my fingers. They're using like a, a lighter, well, it's kind of a gray, eh? White well, belly. it's white belly. And usually with me, it's, it's it's white belly, orange belly. You know, that's, you know, if it's a perch bite, I like something with an orange belly, and I'm just not sure what that main forage is in here. We haven't really figured that out yet, so they seem to like this. Nice. Another decent fish. Yeah, you gotta love it when they're on top water bite. It's just so awesome to watch them come up and snap that bait. This guy's actually putting up a, he's not bad. <laughs> he's putting up a stink. Yeah, that, not as big as your largey, but that might, I don't know if that's my biggest one today or not so far. That's pretty good sized fish. Yeah, now there, now what's he got? Two claws of a crayfish in his throat, same as the other one. Just the tail, tip of the crayfish claw sticking out. So wild. Nice looking fish and good fish. Didn't miss me that time. Didn't miss you that time. Yes, sir. Another smallmouth. Funny, these guys are shallow. Most of what we were catching earlier on was out on that eight foot, six, eight foot break line. Oh, that's another largemouth. So this is my first New Brunswick largemouth ever. It looked like a largemouth when he went by. Yep. So that's my that's my first largemouth for New Brunswick. So they're greener. They're green, yeah. Well, it, it's funny because some of them in the states they call these green trout and them old, and green fish, and they call smallmouth them old brown fish. Anyway, yeah, nothing in there that we can see. So Rick, I noticed that the coloring on the largemouth bass is quite a bit different than on the smallmouth bass. Is that normal? Well, I think all fish have, have some adaptation to their surroundings as far as, as color. And, you know, they're, they're no different. The, we've seen smallmouth come off of sandbars that were very, very pale in color. Uh, you see them coming in off of weed lines. They're, they're very heavily barred. Um, some of them are light. Um, I've seen I've seen largemouth in the states that get a real silvery sheen to their bellies. 
Um, up here, those, those were kind of a, a greenish with, with light bellies up here, those ones we caught this morning. But <clears throat> I think there's some adaptation in all species, depending on what the bottom, because they're trying to camouflage themselves against that from prey, birds of prey looking down. So there's, there's some camo in all of them. And uh, the ones, the smallmouth today have really been just brown. There's been no bars, you know, you don't have that distinct barring on them. They've been pretty brown looking. Welcome back to Backwater Casting. As we mentioned earlier in the show, my guest today is my friend and neighbor, Ron Cloney, and we're fishing on Svednik Lake, but we've moved a bit and we're down near McAdam, New Brunswick. The fog has finally lifted and we're into some great fishing. I saw that line starting to move on the surface and it doesn't move by itself. So this has actually been a good little spot right here. What do we got? Smallmouth. So what I, I did is I switched. Now he threw up some stuff too. I could see it going down, but I, because this is shallow and rocky in here, I went from the top water down. I wanted to fish the bottom a little bit, so I went with a weightless Senko. Yeah, yeah he just, again, he threw up a whole bunch of stuff. It looks like crayfish parts going down. Come here. There. I threw my Senko away, but it landed in the boat, so that's reusable. I fish with Senko most of the time, just find it easier, yes. Now he's a little greener than some of the other ones this morning. They were more, they were actually they're on the rocks and they were more brown. The guy looks a little greener and he's got a little bit of the bars that we were talking with. I just use the same as Rick does with the Texas rig on the worm and then I just, this one here, I used to use a light split shot. Anyway, we get him back down in there. We started, Ron got that large most over there and we worked into the back where the creek comes in and back out. And I was throwing top water all that time. And I just thought as we were coming back out to give them something different, I'm throwing a weightless Senko. And that last fish, I mean, I just thrown it out. It takes a little bit to sink because there's no weight. And I was just watching all of a sudden my line started moving a little bit. It doesn't move by itself. So we set the hook and brought a nice small move to the boat. So Ron's throwing his with a small split shot. And I, ha I have nothing on mine. I've just got it Texas rigged. No, oh, it's a pickerel. Oh, good for you. Lucky guy. Ooh, good size one too. First pickerel of the day. There, well, actually, we think it's the second one. Rick lost a lure for. <laughs> took his top water. But uh, yeah, first pickerel of the day. Fish is a fish. There you go. That's not very big. That one's not a big one. But he came after it. It's amazing when they miss it. They'll just keep coming back. Yeah, little guy. Look at the size of that. That's pretty big as a bait, eh? Yeah. Can you imagine how, how big a dinner plate we would have to have to kind of match that on a size basis for That's what right. he's trying to eat? He'd be sitting out of a wheelbarrow. Yeah. <laughs> he'd, have to, he'd have to have the whole buffet table come over. Small mouth. You know, I think they're actually just, they're just following it out, Rick. Yeah. Okay. What did he puke up? Puke up uh, crayfish. Crayfish, yes, yeah. sir. Yeah, puking up crayfish. That's what they're eating. And we've seen two fish this morning that all I could see was the tips of the claws sticking out of their throats. So that's what they're getting right there. And that's not a real super big crayfish, but I guess it'd be easy for the smallmouth to eat them. He couldn't pinch them too hard on the way down. They got good little pinchers on them. That's a little fella. It's funny, eh? He no hook marks on him either, Rick. No, he puked up a whole crayfish and he still hit your Senko. Yeah. Well, it shows you how, how aggressive they are when that thing puked up a whole crayfish, still hit your Senko. So they just, when they're on the feed, they just seem to keep on eating whether they got something in their mouth or not. Pretty crazy. Fat fish too, and you would think to me, you'd think they'd be up shallower in that in those shallow rocks that they're foraging for crayfish. But most of our fish have come between six and eight feet today, except for that little cut that we were in back there. So it is odd, because you would think that they'd eat easier forage for them up in those shallows. Hard to tell. I don't know if he's got the tail or the hook. Well, as long as he's still there, you get the fight all the way to the boat. Yeah. If they let it go, you don't have to handle them. 
Unless he's a trophy and you got to get your picture taken. That's exactly right. He's not a trophy. No. No. <laughs> he's puking up crayfish oh, too. Oh no, he's, he's he's bigger than he looked in the water. Hey, eh? he's puking up crayfish too though. Oh, that's not bad, Rick. No, he's good fish. Barely got him. Here, hold him up. We'll get another picture. We're neglecting pictures for, oh. for the website. Oh yeah, that, that was good. Pop it out and put it back in again. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Takes talent to do that. There we go. Hit me. And again, no holes. No holes. No. Well, no holes. We just look around the mouth, mouth and stuff to see if it's ever been caught before. And usually, if the fish is caught, they'll have holes or pull marks in their cheeks and stuff. That one never had any at all, which is a good sign that uh, that it hasn't been caught before. And maybe this area doesn't get fished as much as some areas do. I got a bass. I would hard to say. I would say it's a smallmouth, just from the ruckus he's kicking up. But that's what it is. Yes, sir. Come on. Up you go. That was decent size. Yeah, he's good. Just watching my fingers with those hooks. As I said this morning, I don't want one of them in me. Preferably not, eh? Yeah, preferably not. That is almost on the average size of the fish today, which is kind of odd, but a few bigger. It's the same thing, though. They're on the outside edge where that drops off from four feet to eight feet on those boulders. Yeah, Rick, there's three fish showing on the screen here. They look like good size because they got some yellow in them. So we're probably going to be fishing some deep water as we come into this island. So I've gone to a, a drop shot. So with a drop shot, you basically you got your hook high on the line. I like about 14 inches and your weight is on the bottom. So when you're presentation is like this and you keep tension on it and I've just I've just Texas rigged a Senko here I've put an o-ring across the Senko and I've put the hook through it and that just helps prevent the bass from tearing the Senko off we we're in 20 feet of water a second ago and now we're in 10 and we just come up on an outcropping and it looks like there's a fish on top of it so I'm just drop down under the boat and see what happens yes sir well, Ron, you called it. They're right there on the drop. Yeah. He's not a monster, but he's he's a smallmouth. Well, not a bad size. No, he's not bad. No. There he is. There we go, Mr. Smallmouth. They're all fat, though. Look at how fat their bellies are on these guys. They're all eating good. Welcome back to Backwater Casting. Well, in this part of the show, Ron and I are on the move again. We've seen some turns diving into the water and sliding over here by them has turned out to be a great move. Something over there he wants. Look at him, just hammered the water. We got ourselves a smallmouth bass. See, he's stuck on the end of that re-range shirt. Wait. Yeah, nice, nice football shape to him. It'd be nice one of these days. I'm going to find it where the big girls are in here, and it's going to be great fun. But they're fat fish. I mean, if a guy could find some of the big girls, they they would put up a ruckus because if they're all fat like that, you know, you make them 18 or 20 inches. There's lots of fight in them. He was charging you. Oh, oh, he's in the grass. What are you doing? Must have been. He's full of it. That's a nice fish. That's a nice fish, yeah. Yeah, it's a picture taker. That's a nice one. Be still, my heart. Oh, geez. Yeah, watch your fingers. I can't say that enough times. There we go. I waypointed this cove. It's a nice. Uh, that's the first fish I got on that uh, hula popper bait. I bought that a couple years ago and I've used it a few times, but not very often. So 
But that's the first one I got on it. What do you think? Jerk that's baits in July. Thing. Who'd have thunk it? Huh? 75 degree water on jerk baits. That's a bit, this is my picture taking fish because I didn't get one yet today. Got everybody else's picture but Rex. Yes. And. Yeah, no, he's still not coming yet. Come on, turn and up. That. Yeah, that's a good one for here. Yeah, Jack all rearranged jerk bait. Nice fish, Rick. How big is it? Yeah, it's about two and a half or two and three quarter pounds. He's a nice fish. Beauty. That was a good one. That's a good catch. Yeah. They say jerk baits in July. Jerk baits in July. There. Anyway, we get him back. That's another nice fat old brown fish. Oh, I might have to change, change, change tactics here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he says, not wasting any time. He says, I want to get in that bass boat with those guys. You can't say it enough. If you're buying these quality jerk baits, the hooks on them are just absolutely needle sharp. So you want to be very mindful of your hands. That looks like a nice fish. Oh, I like this. I, mar I waypointed this for another day. I like this cove. And it's actually a stream. I, it's a, that's, we're not on an island. That is mainland water. Boy, he is putting up a stink. So that is a creek coming in, which is the first one we've got on today, other than that one down at where we got those large ones this morning, I guess. Nice one? Yeah. Well, it's decent. Solid. They're all nice. Some of them are just bigger. Some of them are just bigger. Some of them are just bigger. He's a chunk. He's got weight. They don't look that long, but they got weight. was a hoot today. No fist, or no shaking, but we can do a little fist bump. We're, we're actually bubble buddies, so that we're probably a little bit safe, but um, we just had a great day today. We started off in a fog this morning with uh, top water and, and found the fish were holding at a specific depth, and then we had to hunt and peck off and on during yep, the day, but right. man, we wrapped her up in style. That yes, was a did. great that, spot. Yeah. yeah, That last spot was awesome. Yeah, we're, we're kind of New Brunswick bound this year because of the COVID virus, and what a better way to spend the summer than to go fishing with friends, explore a, a new body of water. We, we fished the upper end of this lake 17 miles away. We've never been in on this end before. It's a rocky experience to say the least, but what a great fishery here in Canada.